Thank you, Fera. <coughs> so it's a pleasure to be here uh, once again after uh, nearly 15 years. Of course, a lot of things have changed, except the red, uh, special atmosphere of your seminar room. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, uh, yes. <laughs> so today I would like to, to discuss a few, a few aspects of uh, self-organization and thin films, uh, mainly described in the framework of a dynamical model, and also assess the, the relevance of this, uh, of this approach to uh, understand the growth of, uh, of thin films, and mostly metallic thin films. So on this slide, you have already a lot of, uh, of several uh, type of uh, patterns that may be obtained either experimentally or theoretically, theoretically there also. I will come back to this uh, later, but let me first uh, discuss a little bit the, the, context, the, con the con context in which I would like to uh, put this uh, discussion. So we know that the, the modeling of in film is now a very active research uh, field of material science and perhaps the most active ones. It started to grow in the 50s, but it is only in the 70s that due to the dramatic increase of uh, computational capabilities, numerical simulations started to, to be carried on and of course they are essential to obtain atomistic and local details. However, due to the complexity of, and the number of atoms involved, they are still limited to rather small systems, let, let's say up to the, the micron uh, square uh, system. So in the meantime, uh, mesoscopic approach and the dynamical models in, in this continuous approach uh, have been also proposed and Usually, they can deal with more global effects, instabilities, self-assembly, self-organization, and collective behavior in general. And finally, the microscopic descriptions are always uh, prevalent when you are looking at the system at, at its whole, including the preparation systems. But these descriptions, of course, can how they deal with the, the, the shapes of islands, the texture evolution, and so on. So it is why during the 90s appeared the, the idea of uh, multiscale materials modeling, which was a, a, a way of linking all these, uh, these scales and trying to obtain a, so a, a reliable description along uh, at each uh, space scale. So I would just uh, mention also that what I will uh, comment to today and many other effects of uh, self-organization in materials and all, also the, the theoretical models uh, which are needed, the, the methods which are needed from classical one to uh, more modern ones are presented in these two books which were published 
in 2008, a few years ago, with Nazgonian from UCLA. So to go to the idea of metal scale materials modeling, so as I said, the idea is to obtain a reliable description of all the, the behavior from microscopic one to microscopic scales. So let's remind you that at atomic scale, of course, as I said, we have computer simulation, including a lot of different methods, such molecular dynamics, Monte Carlo, and so on. And uh, as I, I said also, these methods give us a very reliable uh, information about diffusion constant, for example, or um, interaction between atoms and so on, interaction energy and so on. On the other hand, and the mesoscopic scale, let's say from a few nanometers to uh, the, the micron or several, several hundreds of microns, you have uh, what we call the mesoscopic scale, and there are continuous models based on rate equation, phase field, or reaction diffusion dynamics are able to uh, assess the collective behavior and describe self-organization phenomena. And of course, macroscopic scale, as I mentioned also, classical mechanics and thermodynamics. So the idea is that, for example, at the mesoscopic scale, the predictability of the model <coughs> is very poor because you need to uh, introduce a phenomenological parameter, and this parameter you can just infer them from the, from the experiments, or if you would like to work in this framework, incorporate them from the microscopic simulation. So the idea is to link and to, to feed the information from one scale to the other and to obtain finally a coherent description at each scale. So in this spirit, the mesoscopic scale is the interesting link between the feature scale, so for the atomic processes, and the instrumental scale, let's say the global scale of the system at the macroscopic level. So we will we'll we'll be concerned by this uh, type of models, and so these models are also uh, different uh, ingredients. They may be based on mass equation, reaction transport equation, nucleation growth, and incorporate eventually statistical mechanics or thermo thermodynamics. Now, two uh, important concepts may be behind, interesting behind these, uh, these, uh, these theories. One is introduced by uh, Ilya Prigorin, 69, the concept of dissipative structure. So in fact, the dissipative structure is the way the system accommodates external constraints. So in open system, far from equilibrium, you have fluxes of, uh, let's say, external field in general. And so far from equilibrium, there is a distance from equilibrium where the system undergoes a bifurcation and beyond this bifurcation, self-organized. So in this spirit, the distance from equilibrium is a source of order. And we have to, to say that this concept is also unifying, there is some universality there. There is also a thermodynamical ingredient since these dissipated structures have to uh, fulfill the theorem of minimum entropy production. And so, a little bit like in uh, equilibrium phase transition, you have, let's say, universality classes, because the global uh, behavior of the system do not depend on the details of its uh, at the microscopic level. So the, the other concept is, was introduced by Hermann Aken at the same time. And uh, there are, of course, some similarities. But in this case, the thermodynamic ingredient is not present. So for synergetics, you have a system 
with many interacting subsystems and due to collective interaction between these, then, these systems, you also may have self-organization beyond an bifurcation or an instability. Now you have there also uh, universal aspects because one important uh, aspect there is that close to the instability, the behavior of the, of the system in, is governed just by the unstable mode, the mode which become unstable at this bifurcation. And all the other ones, the, the evolution of the other ones, uh, is slave to the evolution of these unstable modes, the so-called slave principle, slaving principle. So <coughs> since the dynamics is governed by a few modes, which depend on the characteristic of the bifurcation and also the symmetries of the system, do they have also a limited number of universal or generic behavior? So this is also very important because it, it gives an insight of what may happen in, in, in the system without knowing the, the detail at the, at the microscopic level. And uh, so we, 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 we have to use in this case, it will be very useful to be able to use general concept of bifurcation theory, dynamical system, and close to the instability you may reduce the dynamics of the system to a weakly nonlinear analysis, amplitude equations. So this is more or less the, the framework. And to the specific problem that we are now, we would like to, to address is just the self-organization on atoms on the, on the surface of the thing. And well, this is of course important for making films because the idea we would like to use, or people at least would like to use uh, the outcome of self-organization for making films with well-defined properties, knowing the grain structure, knowing how to organize the quantum dots and so on. This is the positive aspect of self-organization. Of course, we have a negative one which leads to the breaking of the system because self-organization may also localize the deformation, localize dislocations, and when dislocation localize, they may use tracking and so on, so you may destroy the system also. And of course, the interest is not only scientific, but also economic for the, import the importance of all these films in the electronic industry. So we'll try to understand and master, if possible, the nanostructure which are formed during the film grows to control all these aspects. Now we are concerned with the growth of a film on a substrate and see how it will organize or not. So there are a few basic phenomena or processes to be considered there. Of course, you have a substrate and a, a, a vapor of, a, of a, a gas of a, some interesting atoms that you like to deposit on your substrate. So one, the basic process will be atomic deposition and with several processing methods, physical one or chemical one, physics, where the atom just stick on the substrate, chemical one when they stick and interact on the substrate. So you need to know the arrival rates, the absorption, desorption rates, and so on. When the atoms are on the substrate, they will move. So there you have surface diffusion, which is usual uh, nonlinear due to hopping or vacancy mediated. Another element, when your film start to grow, you have an interaction between the film and the substrate. Habitually, usually it's not the same atomic species, not the same crystal. So we will have, we will have at least a mismatch between the lattice structure of the film and of the substrate. So the, this will introduce elasticity field and you will consider it. So by the combination of these, of these processes, you have classically three types of growth modes, 
historically known as the first wonderful Mayor Weber, when you are making clusters, clusters start to develop, but their growth is uh, faster than the lateral diffusion, so they start growing. And even if you have afterwards wetting layers forming behind, you still have a type of columnar growth. Other one, Stransky Krastanov, you start with a wetting layer, more, more or less uniform. This layer destabilizes and forms clusters. And finally, you have a layer by layer uniform uh, growth. So there are three classical basic modes uh, for growing, which I refer to in the, in the literature. Excuse me, Daniel, yeah? as a general context, in which sense this, this, this type of phenomena is related or not related at all to these classical problems of absorption of, of a gas, say hydrogen, hydrogen in iron and phase, and those are equilibrium phase transitions that appear there, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing to do with this type of phenomena? Or? Uh, in, the, in the sense of when you have sputtering, for example, yes, you have just the deposition of a gas on the substrate. Yeah. And then... Uh, but those are equilibrium phenomena you have. Yes. Mm -hmm. But, uh, of course, the, the non equilibrium aspect there will be that uh, you may monitor, that you may have difference uh, of temperature which are not equalizing rapidly. You may have direct f directing the flow of, uh, of atoms, so you may have uh, an angular dependence of the growth and things like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, the simplest one could be equilibrium. Yeah. Uh, I think that I will, uh, this will appear in the next uh, slide. Uh, so another, another aspect. And so I'd like to present this uh, simulation, which was a very interesting one, uh, well, almost 10 years ago, uh, produced by Wang and collaborator when they were at uh, uh, Lawrence Livermore in California. So the example is to, to show you the outcome of the Monte Carlo simulation, which is able to describe the texture uh, competition in the position. So the simulation here is for uh, aluminium. So you see aluminium is an, an FCC crystal. So when it is deposited on a film, it may be oriented along different phases of the crystal. So in particular, the 111 phase, for example, or the 100. We consider this C. So in the simulation, you have um, as I said, Monte Carlo with three uh, basic uh, elements. So at each step of the computation, an atom, you, you have three possibilities. An atom is deposited on the surface, or an atom So the blue corresponds to the 111 orientation and the yellow to the 100. Now what happens is that the growth of the 100 phase is much faster than the growth of the 111, but the diffusion of the 111 is faster than the 100. So at the beginning, you see that you have to generate these clusters, pancake-like for the 111, due to the uh, lateral growth, which is important, and uh, conic-like for the 100, which grow fa first, faster. Now at high temperature, diffusion is important, and so this one will dominate. So that's just what you, what you find here in about 300K, so one third of the melting, the final structure is essentially 111. 
if you lower the temperature, diffusion becomes low also, and so it's not so efficient to grow the one 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 structure, and the growth dom will dominate. And if the growth dominate, if the one zero zero which dominates at, at uh, one nine of the melting temperature, you see that this is this columnar yellow structure which dominates. So you see that this uh, this type of simulation is able finally to describe correctly, according to the experiment, the different texture that may be selected in uh, doing the growth of the Now, can we do a similar thing with our continual, continuous approach? Well, I, this, I will come to this now and uh, here again, we'll try to buy, to, to build a model on, based on the, the basic elements. Adsorption, <coughs> adsorption of atoms on the substrate, possible dis desorption and diffusion on this, uh, in the deposited layer. Now there are possible steps of approximation. When the absorption and desorption is sufficiently rapid, that you do not need to consider their dynamics, you can just deal with the deposited layer. And there you can make, as we said, the proposal by uh, Suo and his group. You have just to consider the statistical mechanics of the absorbed layer. And this is, of course, equilibrium. Now, you can supplement this by the, the kinetics of the absorption desorption, and then you will build a reaction diffusion model that I will describe later. Now let me start with just considering an absorbed layer and its uh, statistical mechanics. Well, if you look at the absorbed layer, what do you have? You have a substrate, which is a collection of lattice sites. You put atom on this, so each side is either occupied or vacant. So you may define an, op uh, an operator, which is the occupation number, let's say, which is zero or one at each side. When you have neighboring sites interacting with an attractive interaction between them, you have just an Ising system or uh, a binary, uh, a binary fluid or a solid solution, and so on. So you can uh, construct easily the free energy for the system and if C is the main uh, occupation of, of coverage which is now in a close gain approximation this is a function which goes from 0 to 1 and so the free energy is just like the, the at least at the, the main field approximation is just the free energy of the rising system so the other, the lattice size, if you go to a continuous description, you have this description when you develop the interaction er energy up to the second order in the distance between the neighboring sides. The chemical potential is this one, and we know, of course, the thermodynamic stability for the uniform ear coverage is... Uh, requires uh, the positiveness of the second derivative of the free energy, and so this condition, which tells you that, so it's just isomorphic to the, to the rising system, that you have a critical temperature, and below this temperature you have an unstable domain. So this will give you just similar uh, process that uh, spinozal decomposition, because if you look at the dynamics, though the coverage is theta to comply with Suo's notation, so the dynamics in the framework of linear uh, thermodynamics is just the evolution of the coverage is equal to the, to the diversion of the, the flux, and the flux is proportional via the on the coefficient to the gradient of the chemical potential. 
So this is just this type of diffusion equation. Of course, if you have, if you just have this, uh, this free energy, this, is, this dynamics is the Carnelian dynamics, and we expect coarsening of the domain that are, which are formed at the beginning of the evolution. But in this type of problem, you, you don't have just uh, Carnelia, you don't have just coarsening, because once you deposit a cluster, there is an, an elastic interaction between the, the cluster and the substrate. Good to the, the, the misfit between the two uh, the lattices, for example. And this generates an elastic energy, but this elastic energy is just minimum when you have small clusters. So you have coarsening due to the Carnelia effect and refining due to the, the elasticity. So the balance between this may lead to a structure with well-defined wavelengths. You can see this there. If you look at the linear growth rate of the perturbation, so the 2, two, two and 2, 4 are, are coming from the Carnelia part of the dynamics. This is coming from the elasticity. And so you see that you have, according to the parameter, you have situation where the the range of unstable wave numbers, instead to go to zero, is uh, limited there, and you have a finite band of wavelengths, giving rise to a structure with a well-defined uh, wavelength. This is verified by these authors, uh, by the numerical analysis of their model, and you see that for critical coverage, you have uh, so one dimensional pattern. Uh, apart from it, you have hexagonal ones in the presence of an isotropy. Uniaxial and isotropy, you have once again stripes. And when you have biaxial bi stress, for example, you have this type of very uh, bone uh, structure. So, so uh, this is the, the coverage, the mean coverage. Mm -hmm. So it's one half a critical mm -hmm. This uh, elastic energy was not in the previous transparency where, where the icing model was introduced. No. Can, can this be introduced also into this script framework or, or is something? So no, in the, uh, the, in the, in the discrete, no, there's no, you need some, uh, some width, some width for the, for the domain, because it's a misfit. Here it's due to the misfit between the crystal. You, 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 you need to have already the, 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 the at least a uh, form of coarse grain, at least. And the, the second is the, the two crystal structures of the of the row that were presented in the previous example, is this uh, sort of no, it's example, not a, it's a single piece? No, it's a, a, a vacant and this one atomic species. And so then we, we can, one, we can build for, uh, two atomic species or two textures, it will be in the same scale. This is the simplest case. You don't have the position here, right? There's no, this is one that No, it's the first uh, deposited layer. No, no, at this time no. So just what I said. If you if you assume that the deposition is instantaneous, that you have instantaneous equilibrating of term of temperature and so on, you can deal with just the statistical mechanics of the deposited layer, which is of course equilibrium. And it's somehow the criticism that we we may have now at this is just minimization of free, of free energy. You fix arbitrarily in, in an arbitrary way the mean coverage, but we would like to know, to see how the coverage is built, and then during the, the way it is, is building, how uh, evolve, how the, the structure evolves. So it's just what I'd like to to do now. 
it's just to build a model where you have so the, the previous path which correspond to the surface diffusion and add the deposition genetics for the model. So we try to build a model where the where, which would be reaction diffusion or reaction transfer where you introduce explicitly the deposition. So the deposition may be uh, sputtering, which is just the vapor deposited on the substrate, or chemical vapor deposition, which is more complicated. I will try to, to do this. But there is no elasticity now. No. So this is now just to see that many theories of uh, quantum dots formation so on rely on elasticity. But before elasticity, you may have still an instability mechanism. Then afterwards, they be coupled with elasticity. So chemi oh, let's go. A chemical vapor deposition. So in this case, you have a rather complicated system, but uh, going to the principles, you mainly have uh, a vapor around, uh, above your substrate, where you have a so-called precursor in the gas phase, and reacting with the appropriate number of vacancies uh, in, the, in the first deposited layer, it can stick on and be absorbed by this layer. Then it reacts in this layer to form the active species, which would be the species forming the film. So these processes can be autocatalytic, and usually they are autocatalytic. And then the active species may in turn uh, dissolve, forming first another compound which dissolve from the film, which go to the gas phase, and leave behind a number of vacancies again. So you can write down the associated chemical kinetics for these processes. And uh, of course, in this case, I did not consider more complex situation where you, you need to, to know the transport in the gas and so on. I just assume ballistic transport to high Knudsen number so that the, the, the atom, uh, the precursor stick directly on the, on the substrate. Um, and once again, if now the surface reaction is the rate limiting process, so if this these ones are much faster than this one. You can eliminate them adiabatically and you go towards this type of dynamics. So we could ma maintain all these, uh, these equations also, but it would be much more complicated, so I will just describe this type of, uh, of uh, situation. Now, once again, as usual, and if you like to, to study instability, what is the uniform coverage coming out of this equation? So the, the behavior there is very different if you, depending on the autocatalyticity of each process. If the autocatalyticity of the evaporation is higher, then you have a zero state which is unstable and a branch, one branch of stable state. If the autocatalyticity of the absorbing process is higher, then you have a zero state which is stable and a branch of a stable and unstable coverage. So we'll consider mainly this uh, situation to see what uh, can happen there. So our system completely to resume is, is this one. Mm -hmm. The reaction term, the nonlinear one, the reaction explicitly displayed there. The diffusion coefficient will, will be associated to, to hopping, so with an activated energy for the, the jumps. 
and also to make the shopping you need to go from one occupied site to a vacant site. So if you look at the linear stability analysis of the of the, the C plus state that I that I was picturing on the previous slide, you have this term which is negative always, this one which will be negative always also, and this the second order in the gradient, which may be responsible of instability. So effectively when T is smaller than this critical temperature, the contribution will be a positive contribution to the linear growth rate and you could have instability if this coefficient is sufficiently large. But this coefficient is essentially 1 over T E exponent the minus omega over T, so at low and high temperature it will be very small. So you expect to have a range of unstable temperature there, which is given by this, this condition, and this condition can be uh, resolved graphically, and you see that putting the two curves that I had on the previous slide, you have this instability uh, domain when, where with a critical wavelength for the, the resulting patterns are growing from the lowest to the largest one and for realistic values of the parameters from about 10 nanometers to uh, 400-500 nanometers. So you see that it's of course uh, just theoretical but if you put the physical parameters obtained from numeric simulation at the atomistic level for aluminum, for example, or copper, you can, you can have the diffusion, the interaction energy, the lattice misfit, and so on, and you, find, you can find reasonable uh, values for the instability temperature, which at least coincide with the simulation that I showed you earlier. So you have a plausibility for the, the possibility of having this type of, uh, of instability that, that can be uh, can fit with uh, some experimental uh, observation. Now if you do, the, if you perform the numerical analysis of the model, so this first in the, in the simplest case, uh, so this is too much. In the simplest case, when you have no uh, autocanaliticity, which would correspond to sputtering. So once again, if you are in condition where you uh, steady state, steady coverage is 0.6, for example, rather close <coughs> to instability, you have, as, as usual, uh, a sinusoidal profile with a wavelength about uh, 50 nanometer. At low coverage, then you, you find a strong deviation in the wavelength and you find also uh, a nearly uncovered substrate with uh, dots which are equally separated there. And if you have a high coverage, rather close to one, you have the uh, holes in the, the pattern formed by equidistant holes. Now, if you are even closer to, to one, you, you find just isolated bumps. And in two dimensions, so you find uh, for a small coverage, you find also a collection rather uh, irregular of uh, uh, dots arrays. So this simulation was done with Marcel Clerk. Why are they regularly spaced? It's come out from the simulation. <laughs> so close to threshold, they are regular. But, but yeah. This regularity, does this agree with um, the real growth in this car? Or is this just a uh, numerical simulation? It's just numerical simulation of the model. I know, but if you compare this to the real growth of, let's say, quantum dust, depending on parameters, then can you get results if you show? Well, there is no such precise interpretation of experiments. 
but of Monte Carlo simulation, yes, you can you can show that it's similar. Well, I think I've never seen real regular patterns in the growth of polar dots, for example, unless it was seen by Monte Carlo simulation. No, I I will show afterwards that when you have elasticity, then you can order them. But in of course, simulations or in no, in experimental. <laughs> Now, if you, for the, com for the, the more general uh, model, uh, well, corresponding to CVD, then the, the bifurcation diagram is uh, sketched here. You have this linear stable uncovered state. Uh, situation, you may obtain regular hexagons or localized structure, including pattern inside, like in this case, for example, or just dots. And of course, this is possible because you have bistability domains and even tristability domains. But this is still to be. Uh, to be explicitly done for the model uh, in itself, and not just closely to the to the instability. Why there is no range of stable stripes? Uh, because for the parameters used there, th these are uh, these are there but unstable. You can, pro 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 you can tune it. Yeah, you can tune it to to, to have them stable. Now, when you when you start growing, if the system uh, continue to grow, when of course you have to to consider at some time the vertical direction, and then one could, for the first day, of course, couple them, but after a sufficiently large number of layers, let's say about uh, 100, you could uh, uh, propose at least a continuous version in the vertical direction, and in this case, the model would like would uh, be like this, where the, with the dependence of the, the the uniform coverage on the eight or the, the eight of the of the film of the on the vertical coordinate in the film, so that would be the surface depth. And so you see that you have once again the chemical terms there, the nonlinear diffusion term there. And so according to the coverage at the vertical coordinate that you are looking at, you can recover the three uh, fundamental growth modes. Effectively, you could start unstable from the very beginning, and then this instability would propagate, which would be the columnar growth, growth like in this uh, system, for example. You could have also stability for the first layers, and then at some point, due to the variation of the, uh, of the, the reference uh, coverage, you could become unstable and have a growth just like the Stransky Trastanov. And you can also have stability at each, uh, at each layer, at stability, until the top surface. Then, of course, afterwards you can rely on go, uh, more uh, microscopic growth uh, models like the KPZ, which will produce the roughening at the surface as it is found experimentally, for example, in this, in this case. And once again, you could link consistently the, all these uh, these levels of uh, of description. 
Daniel, can you, can, it's possible to go from one to the other? I mean, it's, not, it's possible to get the KPZ starting from the previous one with some limit? No, no, no it's just uh, after when everything continues and then the KPZ is... But, but, it's not, it's, but, but can, can one get that in a limit or is something that has to be postulated? Okay. No, KPZ, you, you can transfer, for example, in, if you have stability in the, at the surface, so you, you can uh, you can transform this equation uh, and, and in the the okay. well, just to neglect the linear configuration. No, up to now, uh, I I didn't have uh, incorporated uh, elasticity, which may be important, and I will try to 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 do this. Uh, in the, in the last minutes. So as I said uh, earlier at the uh, previous level of, of description, usually one has a misfit between the, the substrate and the deposited layer. So we will have to take into account somehow uh, um, the, the elasticity uh, the elastic problem and the coupling between the elasticity field and the uh, atomic, the, the coverage, the concentration fields. And we will describe this, we describe the, the layer through the von Karman equation for plates or, or, or membranes, let's say. You will, and you will have to define the deviation, the bending coordinate, which is the, the deviation from the mid plane of the, of the layer. And this will be coupled with the processes that uh, are constructing the layer itself. So before this, let's just mention that uh, you don't have not only uh, misfit, misfit uh, strains, which may play a role, but just any weak field uh, on the substrate to trigger the orientation of the selection of the principle of the of the of the structure. It is well known that close to instability, you have a lot of orientation possible, for example, for a structure, but just a we a very weak external field is able to select a particular structure. This is the case uh, that people are using to uh, orient uh, quantum dots uh, some sometimes and in this experiment by Kim at UCLA. Uh, if you have in the substrate a buried array of dislocations, you can see that quantum dots orient along the lines, the dislocation lines. And so we, we just verify this on expanding the, the reaction diffusion model with the interaction with the substrate. And in a, a very uh, a case when you have just uh, when the, the interaction energy with the dislocation with respect to the nearest neighbor interaction is just uh, 1%, for example. You see by the numeric analysis of the model that you find also this effect. So here yeah, you have, and of course you have also a very big difference between the, the, the corresponding wavelengths because you have a, a separation between dislocation lines of about the micron and the separation between uh, quantum dots is about 10 nanometers. So this is for a very small uh, strain field. Now for the case of the of more general, I will just illustrate because the, this model is rather complicated. By the way, it's, it's, uh, it's derivation, it's uh, completely done in, in, the, in the book with, uh, with Gonian where all the details are Maybe from there, you have the, so one part of the evolution, which is the evolution of the bending coordinate, where uh, the effect of bending, the stretching, you have here the, the, the stress field, these are the derivative of the second derivative of the bending coordinate, the interaction between so the, the adherence, the, the, adhe the adhesive force uh, of the surface on the film. And then you have a coupling, of course, because 
the deviation from the uniformity in coverage affects the bending and in the kinetics of the, of the coverage you have also an a coupling because the bending affects the activation energy for the hopping of the, of the atoms. You, you, know, you may know, of course, all the, the variables there. The young modulus are, are, are known for most of the system. It's even of the terapascal for graphene, for example. The Poisson ratio is known also. You may know everything there. Now, once again, here you have a temperature effect due to the presence of this diffusion coefficient. And so for high, once again, for high and low temperature, the, the coupling is, uh, is irrelevant. And in this case, you have the traditional study of uh, wrinkling or buckling uh, because this equation gives rise to a buckling where you have a compressive stress there. And in fact, the, the stress has all these nonlinearities, but also when you have misfit, uh, misfit induced uh, stress. And with this is compressive, this contribution is destabilizing, and you may find a, a critical misfit strain and a critical wave number. For usual values for habitual uh, uh, deposition of uh, aluminum, copper, and so on, usually this critical misfit is very small, so you, you have usually an effect of the, of the misfit. And so in, even in the absence of coupling, you will have uh, uh, wrinkles on the, on the substrate which is representing this. So you have wrinkling when the substrate follows the, the film. You have a strong adhesion there. And a flow buckling where you have a delamination of the film, which can happen also. And you have a, an illustration of the two. This is either experiment when you once again you are able to find these strides. So these, are, these problems are well known, even for, uh, for, for pl microscopic plates and so on. But at this level, you see that you find also this, this type of stripe, uh, herring bone structure, and so on. Now, if you look at the two-dimensional problem, where you have, for example, biaxial misfit, then what, what, uh, what can we do? You can look at the, at the amplitude equation of the unstable mode beyond the buckling instability. And you can derive them explicitly from the von Karman equation. And the important thing is there is this coefficient, which is the interaction, the nonlinear interaction between two unstable modes separated by an angle phi. And this quantity can be computed uh, in the framework of this model. And it has this form. And it is less than one in general, because the condition to have it less than one in this one, the Poisson ratio is always less than one half, so you have always this condition. And we know from the theory of pattern formation that if this quantity is lower than, is smaller than one, you will have supercritical square patterns. The one dimensional patterns are not stable, but square ones well. The simulation of the model confirms this. And this experiment, in this experiment, you also find this uh, behavior. And putting the, the corresponding physical parameters there, you find that there is somehow a qualitative agreement because for a wavelength of 16 micron, you should have a misfit strain of 10%. And in this case, we have experimentally 12 uh, so this is in the, in the range of acceptable value. Another thing is that all the wavelengths generated by the uh, elastic and the deformation instability are usually much larger than the wavelengths associated with the 
coverage instability. So you can also see here the difference between the, the two types of uh, patterns that could occur. Now, of course, uh, well, I think that this is rather complicated. Just saying that the the coupling is destabilizing. So even if you have stabilized stabilized uh, elasticity and stabilized uh, uh, coverage, even the presence of the of this coupling can, as you can see it on the on the linear growth rate of perturbation, destabilize the system or enhance the destabilization when the system is already unstable. And uh, in this case, when you can also perform the weekly nonlinear stability analysis, the weekly nonlinear analysis, derive the amplitude equations, and compute this gamma, this coupling between unstable modes. You have, of course, a path coming on nonlinear path coming from the elasticity, one coming from the atoms, and you may see that. If the atomic part dominates, the atomic part does not depend on the angle because the nonlinear chemistry is always scalar, so you have no angular dependence. You may have superstructural stripe or subcritical hexagons. If it's the other way right, you should have squares and hexagons. And here you have an example of uh, lateral organization of uh, quantum dots, and you see that. In this experiment, at uh, least you have a well defined hexagonal structure for this super resistance. Finally, the most interesting one, or the most interesting right, for the people who are fond of playing with patterns, uh, if you have uh, instability either for elasticity and either for atoms, where, well, well, of course, you could have, uh, I mentioned two bifurcations with different a wave number, and then you could have quadratic coupling between modes corresponding to each instability, like in this case. And so in this case, we know that this may give rise to uh, super lattices or quasi-patterns. Those things are coming from other systems. This was the simulation of a thin film, but under irradiation. Now, for the system I will discuss here, this has not been done yet, so there is room for, uh, for a playground, let's say, to find different types of patterns and also try to rely them to uh, experimental observation. So with this I can summarize. So I try to, to show you that uh, they can, there can be an abstract an absorbed layer instability due just to the combination of absorption, desorption, and reaction kin uh, kinetics. So this may lead, lead to nanostructure formation at the beginning of the growth, so without elastic effects. In this case, the patterns are dynamically select. It is not an equilibrium process. Of course, temperature, the wavelength, and so on depend on the on the, on the physical parameter of the, of the system. If you start growing, pattern se selection, of course, will result from the balance between surface reaction and elastic effect, will become important when the, the, the film is growing. You may also fix patterning because the growth may be slow. Sometimes in some experiments, you have the growth of a micron per hour, a micron per minute. And then you can also stop the, the process when you have one desired pattern, let's say. You recover the, the classical rows. And of course, the hope is, well, in this case, always the same, to, to be able to, 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 to promote or to, to devise new uh, ways to form well-specified structures without a strong external field. And of course, the drawback is that you, you need to rely on atomistic simulation, multi-scale materials modeling, and so on, because you have to know really, to make the contact with experiment, really what are 
the kinetic ray, the absorption ray, the diffusion of the substrate, and so on. So that's it. Thank you. Well, deepening is when you have already uh, some uh, critical thickness of the uh, some thickness of the film. Well, but this thing that you get so this kind of regular this, this regular distance between you clusters could be that somehow due to that some kind of phenomena related to that so that these clusters get the atoms by themselves. So they deplete the rest of the space from this? Well, as I said, when you have already a, a, a growth layer, in the first layer, no, it's just uh, the, the, the motion between atoms. Okay, that was for the first layer. Yes. But afterwards, yes, of course, it is. When you are at the level of, of, of the TPZ, for example, at this level, you, you have also the possibility of this. Uh, and the second question is, you start always from a flat surface, no? I mean, that... Okay. <laughs> so you have not explored the case that the surface has some roughness, and then that, how that would influence the... Well, it, it would affect, uh, perhaps not qualitatively, but it will affect, of course, the, the, the diffusion you have to you would have to take account the diffusion of, on the steps, which is different than in the bulk, and so on. So it would be more difficult, but more difficult also to, to, to have a, a global picture. Ah, yes, yes, yes. In all your mesoscopic models, there were, in any of your mesoscopic models, there was a noise term added to, to it. Is, there is no phenomenon that needs some noise to be put explicitly to explain something? Because noise was explicit on the, on the atomistic simulations. There is no need of it on the, when you go to, to micron scale? Well, I would say that the, well, usually, usually in fact from equilibrium, the Thermal noise is too small to be relevant, let's say. But of course, you would have uh, noise induced by the, the processing of the thing. And, well, this was not, uh, not considered. Not, it would, would affect close to, to instability, of course. It, it could affect the, 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 the dynamics, but uh, it has not been taken into account. Uh, how far can people go with molecular dynamics or Monte Carlo in terms of simulating these things? Well, as I think uh, at least uh, uh, five years ago, <laughs> it was <laughs> at the square mile uh, and uh, 10 nanometer. And simulation time? Because yeah, because you have, if you calculate the number of atoms, the number of uh, of variables, and you are rapidly above the 10 to the 19 that was commented mm -hmm. in one of the previous seminars that, uh, that allow physicists to, to go, I don't remember where, but, uh, <laughs> to elsewhere. No, but then, uh, sorry, explain uh, wrong. I'm not speaking about CPU time, but uh, I mean the, the physical time that you can simulate is long or? So it's well, milliseconds, microseconds. The real time? The, yeah, the real time. Ah, yeah, well, milliseconds. Mm -hmm. Depending also on your rate, it can, can be up to the minute, depending on the, on the, on the deposition rate.